Hey everybody, welcome to LinuxCast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Welcome everybody to the LinuxCast. We are podcasting live, as we always do, on Saturdays at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So if you want to catch the live version of the show, which is only available during the live stream or via Patreon, you can do so by subscribing at thelinuxcast.org. That's not where you're supposed to go. YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, guys. It's alright. It's, it's been a long day already. Both of them would actually work, but it's fine. I'll save you some steps. Uh, anyways, welcome to LinuxCast. We talk about Linuxy things. Today we have a topic, but w- before we get into that, we're going to jump into the thing that we always do and talk about our week in open source. So, Tyler, what you been up to this week? Messing around a lot with my flake. I've improved quite a lot about it. So the structure of it's changed a little bit, and I've just kind of simplified a lot of things. And I've started using like if statements in Nix to like choose different configuration options based off of like profiles that the user can set. So like you can run like an AMD desktop, hopefully in the future, I'll have like an Intel desktop, you know, AMD, like the graphics card, you'll be able to switch out. Like if you've got an Nvidia GPU, that'll switch settings, whole bunch of stuff like that. Uh, down the line, I'll be implementing stuff for like virtual machines. I've already got a couple options in there for that. So I've just been making improvements and working a lot and testing a lot of the stuff that I can do and that and working out on the, uh, the fun weather. That's about it. Been, been having to be out in that cold, like freaking wind, which stinks, but Southerners aren't supposed to get this type of weather. (laughs) No, no, it's not, not supposed to be this it. way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I understand that. It's all right. We're, we've actually gotten used to it today. Today's like almost 20 degrees. and like, oh man, this is kind of warm. <laughs> like it was, over, it was negative eight overnight. It was great. So me, what have I done this week? So I have been messing around with fixing my home directory. So I'm not going to talk too much about this because I have a dedicated video coming out this late, later this week, but just to know that I have a really pro- hard time with developers shoving everything that they want willy-nilly into my home directory. Every time I install an application, it drives me absolutely fucking markers, but I've mostly given up on it, on fi- actually fixing it because there's not much you can do about it. I mean, yes, there's th- things that you can move by you know setting environment variables and stuff like that, but that's only about half of the shit. The rest of the stuff has to stay. So I found a workaround, and that's what I've been working on, and uh, that that was fun. I also have been working on creating a better share mechanism. So there's a program called Local Send, I think is the name of the, the application. I'm going to do a video on that as well if, if, if it works. I, I've only just installed it today, but basically what it does is it allows you to share files between your computer and your phone which is nice now i know that like, kd connect will do that but i don't need all the other stuff that kd connect does so this was just easier but so that's what i've been trying to do because I, I, I like at least twice a week i always have like a picture or a file or something that i need to take from my phone to my my computer like last week so last <laughs> Last week's podcast was fun, so I was supposed to do Tech Over Tea with Brody, uh, letting that cat out of the bag a little bit, but my internet went down right as I was getting started, and it was still out Monday night when Nate sent me the podcast, so here's what I had to do with the, for the podcast in order to get to work, so Nate sent me the Caden Live file on my, uh, via Discord, so I had to get the Caden Live file on my phone, hook my phone up via a USB cable, put it on my computer, render the Kden live file into a, the appropriate MPV file, transfer it back to my phone because I didn't know computer <laughs> or no internet. I mean, and so I had to put it back on my phone, use 5G, which let's just rant about 5G for a second. I've had dial up that's faster than 5, 5G. I swear to God, <laughs> this is slower than shit. Uh, but anyways, I got the, the video back on my phone, uploaded it to YouTube via my phone. It took three and a half hours to upload. It was ridiculous. 
And the thing about, so I have an iPhone and the thing about the iPhone is if you, you can't upload stuff in the background, like you can on Android, like Android will start a separate process and put it up in like the notification bar in some applications. So it'll just like, you know, upload, but on the iPhone, you have to keep that thing on not only like the app open, but the screen on, otherwise it times out. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not starting over again. Cause that would fucking piss me off. I get like two, uh, two and a half hours into it, like 75% and it'd have to start over again. I, it would piss me off. But anyways, that was a fucking adventure. And then the, the worst part about it, it was like 20 minutes after I finished uploading fucking internet came back on. <laughs> so mad. Oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, that was not a, a good experience, but anyways, that's basically what I've been doing. I have been, I'm still having the window manager blues, but that's neither here nor there. I don't need to talk about that for a th- third week in a row. I'm still on Xmonad, by the way. I just also still don't like Haskell, but that's not, again, neither here nor there. All right. So that's what we've been doing in open source. Well, I have a couple things that I need to talk about before we jump into the main topic. First, per Nate, our awesome editor, I'm supposed to remind Tyler that the reason why his audio crapped out like last week was because of Nick's OS and that he should use a real distro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me on that. That was from, that's per Nate. Anyways, the second thing I need to do is if you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, we'd re- and specifically if you're doing it via Apple Podcast, we'd really appreciate it if you left us a review. That would really, really help out the podcast. It doesn't take you know, very long to do so. You don't even have to leave any words. Just leave a rating if you don't want to, you know, bother typing. It's five seconds. It really helped the help out the show, get us a little bit higher in, in the rankings for Linux podcasts. That'd be cool. All right. And the last thing, just a, a, as a reward for everybody who does so and everybody who doesn't do it, 10% off your entire order if you ha- head on over to the shop at shop.thelinuxcast.org by using the promo code WINDER24. I feel like I'm running a commercial outlet here because I'm having a sale. <laughs> I, I was trolling around through fourth wall today and I'm like, Hey, there's a promo code section there. I created a promo code and like, okay, cool. There you go. Anyways, there you go. Those are the things that I need to talk about a little bit of housekeeping and we can move on to the, to the main topic today, which is content creation on Linux. Now, before we do jump in, just to let you know, this topic came via Fraggle on the Discord server. So if you would like to suggest a podcast topic, there is a dedicated channel on the Discord where you can submit it and it will be voted on and we will actually do your podcast topic if you know we want to. We, we, we have ultimate veto authority because you know we're, we're not doing the Linux from scratch challenge. I'm sorry, whoever submitted that, we're just not doing it. Neither Tyler or I have that kind of time or interest. You know in doing the office channel just just not gonna happen but if you want to leave a a topic on the to for us to consider uh head on over to the discord channel uh server select the podcast ideas channel and then leave us one there and we'll take a look at it so there you go anyways this one's from fraggle content creation so tyler you have done various podcasts in in the past you've made, made obviously many many videos so what i thought we could do would just kind of go through some of the things that we do, some of the tips and tricks that we've learned over the course of the last how many ever years we've been doing this and uh, just, you know, wing it from there because I have no plans, obviously. Well, I would say the to address the first question that probably is like very, very common is can you stream or record video without using OBS? And I would say like on Linux, Yes, you can. There is a handful of tools for doing it. I highly recommend staying away from just using FFmpeg. Anyone that tells you to just use FFmpeg is trolling. Trust me, I've streamed with FFmpeg. You can do it. We all remember. It's not easy. (laughs) (laughs) You probably will have many, many problems. So, but... Then when it comes to actually like why you might want to use OBS, like, so with you and doing content creation on Linux, why have you chosen OBS? Well, I mean, it's literally the only option I think, I mean, there's like, there's like one called like X streamer or something like that that's available, but nobody ever uses it. I mean, even like people who just use windows use OBS because it's like the, of all the programs are out there, it's like the default and it's default for a reason because it's good. You know, yeah, it pisses me off because it doesn't remember transforms like 60% of the time. But I'm pretty sure that's more like a, a me problem than anything else. But 
other than that, I mean, it does everything that you need to do. It can record multiple tracks of audio, which is really nice, which is something that I probably should set up now that I think about it. But you can do that. You, uh, you can, if you want, to, if, at least theoretically, run multiple instances of it. So you could record multiple camera streams as well, which is nice. And it basically allows you to set up a, an entire streaming system. So if you do multiple podcasts or you do videos and you do a podcast like I do, you can have different scene collections, which I find like the best thing ever. So like I have a scene collection for the podcast. And when there was more of us, I had a scene collection for when there was just three of us and a certain person was missing. I, had, I have a scene collection for Wayland when I needed a dedicated Wayland instance. So I could, you know, have Pipewire be the, the stream capture, not, you know, the, the Xorg. So it just has so many features and... Like you said, the other option is FFmpeg, and we all remember the Japanese movie version of Tyler, where yeah. he was talking, and then the audio came five seconds later. That was that was the, that was the what the BSD days, and uh, yep, <laughs> yep, always entertaining. You, yeah, you, you those go, were good days. You can go back and watch some of those episodes. So, oh, I should should talk about that in my thing. I redid the website, but that's, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Sorry, I'm scatterbrained Ooh, nice. today, man. This is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good. This will make for like very natural conversation. Yeah. yeah, we'll definitely talk about the website later because I'm interested to see what you've done with it because I haven't checked the website. So when we, when we talk about it, I'll bring it up so I can see what you've changed. All right. But um, so with like like when it comes to doing stuff inside of OBS or creating content, I think the biggest tip that I could give anybody is. OBS will fix camera problems in other applications. So if you want to do content creation on Linux, it's actually kind of a bonus because you're already going to be using the program to, and you're probably going to be piping your you know cameras and stuff into it anyway. So use the virtual camera option, like install V4L2 loopback on your system and make sure it's started and then use the virtual camera and use the dummy device that that creates from OBS inside of like discord or anywhere else. Cause that green flashing that you have with your camera and I would have with my camera inside of discord is fixed when it's go when it goes through OBS. So definitely take advantage of that feature. A lot of people don't know that you can do that. So or you could do what Matt did and hook up a second webcam. <laughs> that too. I did that for a while but, as well. It also can, works. Yeah. It's just a, such a nerdy thing. But yeah, Josh brought up Simple Screen Recorder and the GNOME Screen Recorder tool. Those are okay if you're making videos, but they don't do very well with single sources. Multiple sources, I should say. So if you want to create your... If you want to record your webcam and your screen and maybe have a, a like a... Uh, end screen credit or whatever or you want to create or you or you have a uh, words are hard yeah you have one of these things the a capture card that's capture what the card. word that's the word yeah. i was looking for good lord matt uh, if you have a capture card it's harder to use one of those things than obs obs supports all that stuff simultaneously and you don't have to you know mess around with you know recording your audio one your video once and then recording it again basically to get the other source it's not as easy with those things. Those are much more simple tools for for content creation. If you're just recording your screen, uh, or just recording your 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 webcam, you know th those yeah. probably work. Well, and I mean, it also allows you to do nice transitions <laughs> like that without having to do that in post, which is it is definitely nice. It saves you editing time after the fact. You don't have to add in something like that if you're going to be, you know switching and doing stuff inside of a recording yeah maybe eventually somebody can walk me through how to do that because that looks really freaking cool but i'm too dumb to do it oh i'm i'm sorry man like i didn't know you didn't know how to yeah dude we'll set up a time i'll show you it doesn't take long at all because you literally like you just have to show me like what kind of transition you think is, is really cool and i'll show you how to make it because it's it's actually Caden Live is ridiculously good for for making those stinger transitions. Let's talk about Caden Live for just a minute, and then then we'll come back to to OBS just because I have a couple of things to say about that. But, but hey, uh, it's still about content creation. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, so I made so 
Alex from the Linux tube pointed me towards an AI, AI like I know it's AI, but he told me to, pointed me towards an AI tool to make shorts out of your podcast. Basically, you feed it the link from your podcast, and it will create a whole bunch of shorts, and it'll do all the work for you. But it's fucking expensive as fuck. <laughs> it's like sixteen dollars <laughs> a month to do this, and like first off, shorts don't earn you any money on YouTube, like zero dollars. Uh, I think I've earned like maybe four dollars on shorts my entire YouTube career. It's now granted they just started doing like revenue share, so you, there's that aspect to it. But still, you don't earn very much unless you like get millions of views. So I didn't. I, I refused to pay the sixteen dollars a month. But you can use the free version, but it puts this gigantic honking watermark on it, and I hate that. So what I did was I cheated. I let them create the shorts, but then I just because it like finds the best shorts for you and like dices them up and nice and you so you just what i did is when i went and found that part of the podcast and went into caden live and made the short myself so caden live has speech recognition built in to it and you can go to the subtitles menu it will listen to your entire video create the subtitles and line them up specifically with the words on the screen. So if you've ever watched a TikTok video or a YouTube short or whatever, and they have the subtitles right on the screen and they move along as it goes along, Caden Live will do that. And that's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it was really cool. And that's the KDE, the Caden Live Connect. So you guys know I bitch about KDE all the damn time. Uh, that thing has so many awesome freaking features. It's just like every time I go into it, I go, oh, wow, I didn't know Caden Live did that. Like, over and over again. Like, I'm always constantly surprised by it. It's, like, the only video editor that I'd probably use. I know other people like Resolve, but it's too complicated for me. I mean, I like DaVinci Resolve, but for most for most types of content, like, that are generally around Linux and going to be done on Linux, I... I don't think, you know, a lot of the features of DaVinci Resolve, like, I mean, the major one being its color correction, and it's it does have a completely different kind of workflow. So, I mean, maybe you can make that uh, make an argument that you prefer that, but I think, generally speaking, DaVinci Resolve, there's a lot of features that most people just aren't going to take advantage of and probably don't need. Like, you probably don't need to co color correct your terminal. Like, it's, it's fine. <laughs> like, so if you're going to be like super like if you so he, people always ask like it came up in the linux user group that we did the last time about youtube and stuff people ask how you get you get started and stuff and and they ask for advice and my number one piece of advice now guys gotta remember i'm not mr beast like i have a few subscribers but i don't you know like not the the supreme you know advice maker on on youtube but if i had to give one piece of advice it, it would be one your first videos are going to suck and this is this also happens with podcasts so it all work like any type of content you're going to create whether it's for youtube or podcasts or whatever your first ones are going to be absolutely terrible it doesn't matter if you've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on your microphone setup your camera whatever it doesn't matter none of that stuff matters your first ones are going to be are going to be bad it's just absolutely true. Your first videos were bad. My first videos were yep. bad. I'm sure Mr. Beast's first videos were bad. It's just the nature of the beast. Very few. I mean, every once in a while, you'll go to a, a YouTube channel and they have like five videos and they're all like cinema quality. And yep. those guys have like either degrees in cinema or they're, they're videographers. They know what the hell they're doing. So they're going to be good right from the beginning. But unless you're in that really rare perspective, you know, the, your first content is going to be bad. So just be bad for a while. That's the point of it is just get it out there. And the tools that you use matter less than actually just doing it. So if you, it, yes, you can spend $300 on DaVinci Resolve and get it so that it you know works good on Linux, but you don't have to. You can use tools like Caden Live. And even as you become more successful, you'll find that you like, you prefer the free and open source tools probably more. But really, the tools like your microphone and stuff like that, those that stuff doesn't matter nearly as much as getting your content out there. Make your first podcast and then make your second podcast. And as you go along, then you'll get better. But the point that I, it's just, I don't really remember what point I was trying to make. It's really, really bad this week. Well, your point was just start making content. Just do it. Like, 
you're you don't have to have cinema quality to get started like you'll get better along the way also like the nice equipment and stuff like assuming you can't afford it like you don't need it either like people are fine with a 40 dollar webcam it's okay if you've got a bad mic just save up and get one when you can like it's it's fine like it, it's better to go ahead and start like if that's what you're interested in and you'd like to start a hobby with it start it like no one starts a hobby and is good at the hobby when they first start it's fine learn learn how to talk learn how to edit and learn how learn how to do that stuff then get better recording equipment and stuff like as you go and it's so much easier to do so see here's my argument is that i think that it's easier to get started on content creation on linux i don't think that a lot of people would agree with me but those people have experience with the tools on windows so on windows you're going to be very tempted to use the adobe products because that's what everybody uses you know if you're, you're going to use you know you're, you're going to use Premiere, you're going to use things like that in order to do your content. And that stuff costs money. And because it costs money, it's going to put a block a blockade in front of you to get your first content out because you're not going to want to pay that money. Like It's a lot of money for the first month to get those pieces of software. And that's going to keep you from probably starting it because you're going to like, oh, well, you know, I don't have to really have the money. I'm going to have to wait until I get the money and then whatever. With the open, and obviously the open source tools are available on Windows, but you're much more likely to use the open source tools on Linux because the Adobe stuff's not here. So things like Caden Live to edit your videos, things like OBS to record your videos, things like Audacity to edit to record your audio, those things are amazing on Linux, and they're they're obviously amazing on Windows as well. But the point is, like I said, they're only, that's really what you have on Linux. You have kind of forced to use those. And as you do, you kind of realize that, you know, I can do this and I don't have to have the, you know, the 40 or 50 or $70 a month subscription to, to the Adobe tools. And it, it, it removes that, you know, block to actually getting your content out there. And like I said, they're good tools. Like, say what you want about audacity's like interface but it just works really well unless you're tyler and and it hates it hates him like half the time but that's okay that's that's yeah. just the tyler problem if you use the real distro um <laughs> sorry no it i i mean to be honest everything works just fine like uh, also I, I would say too when it comes to like which distro you need to go with for content creation it doesn't matter like if you have any problems with your system packages, try a flat pack. That'll probably fix it. It's probably just the system packages out of day. It doesn't come with something being built or whatever. Try the flat pack version. You might need to have flat seal as well to edit permissions for it. Maybe, but if you're using flat packs or familiar with them, you probably got flat seal anyway, so you're fine. I don't really see many problems with choosing a distribution. Like, I mean, last week I, I muted the audio for buddy barking and then forgot to unmute it. So it kind of ruined everything, but you know, apart from user error, normally, regardless of Linux distro, you'll create content just fine. <laughs> I should say that I'm trolling the Nix OS guys and Tyler specifically. Uh, I've gotten into some <laughs> trouble about that of course last week I, i'll try not to troll the next os guys so much it's, it's just, all in good fun it's just so much fun to troll them because they get so defensive about it they really have become arch linux when it comes to their defensiveness of their but we're not talking about next os again I, we totally ruined that conversation by having it multiple times but anyways the, the other thing that i want to talk about is that i do something different than a lot of other people do like a lot of people will rely 100% on OBS to record your video and audio at the same time. And it does a good job of that. You can do that. Tyler's doing that right now. Tyler does that in his videos. I've always done it two different ways or in two places, I should say. I record audio and video in OBS, but I also record it in Audacity. So, and this is just the thing. I, I, it's not really a, a Linux thing, but I fully believe in the bottom of my heart that it's better to have backups than not and just as you go along and making your content you're gonna experience this every single person has where they've either forgotten to record hit the record button or something's went you know corrupt or something's went wrong with the audio or 
you're recording or here's one that we've all done you have a, a webcam on your your monitor it has a microphone it's the shittiest fucking microphone you've ever heard in your life but you've just recorded a 30 minute long video and you weren't coming through the nice 400 dollars microphone you have sitting in front of you you were coming through the damn cheap 100 dollars microphone on the webcam always always have a backup it's so much easier. Now, that's it's not always going to solve all the audio problems. Every once in a while, you'll you'll still be coming through the wrong source. But chances are, if you're you're focusing on two different recordings, specifically if you're recording in, in your audio in Audacity as well, you'll be able to at least kind of see. Well, oh, those audio levels look a little high, and the, you'll 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 learn to know that the audio levels on your webcam can usually look higher because the gain is like blown out of proportion because they they need to be able to hear people that usually sit farther away from the screen and it's just you know you'll learn those little tricks but always as often as possible have a backup so for our podcast we everybody always asks why do you do the claps well we do the claps because we rec- record separate audio so we can line those up that's why we do the claps but also in terms of backups we have the OBS version of the audio. We have the Audacity version of the audio, which is being recorded in two places. And if we needed to, we would have a third thing. Like like if I lost power or my my hard drive went corrupt immediately after the podcast, please don't do that to me. I could go to YouTube and download the YouTube video and get the audio that way. So multiple backups of your recording as you go along, it's going to just save you so much time and effort and pain and suffering. I mean, I've enjoyed having uh, a lot of, I don't know, I've, I've enjoyed having a lot of choice too with the types of stuff you can do, like our software you can choose to use. Cause I mean, if you, if you don't like Caden live, there is other video editors like don't. And just because we mentioned one program doesn't mean there aren't alternatives that work just as well for it. I mean, even though OBS is probably hands down the best tool for recording, there are others that you could use. You don't have to use it. And there is also probably still some other users like it. Like if if we're talking about like OBS compared to something like simple screen recorder, there's there's definitely going to be more people that are around and available to help you with your OBS problems. But you still will be able to get help. You know, if you have problems with simple screen recorder or, you know, whatever program. Yeah, definitely the choices thing is very important because not everybody. I mean, I know some people just absolutely hate Caden Live, like, you know, because they've had experience. Caden Live, so here, here's the thing like, everybody knows this that if you use Caden Live, it goes through periods. Sometimes they've, you know, they introduce a new, you know, feature because it's a KDE project, they do that. You know, they they fix bugs or whatever. They do something, and it will go through this period where it's just the crashiest piece of shit that you've ever seen in your life. Like, literally, you can't do anything with it. It'll just crash. And sometimes the solution is, like Tyler said, to install a different version of it. Install the flat pack version or the snap or get it from your repos, whichever. You know, to switch to a different version, maybe you can download an older version. If you're, you know, they have an app image. I hate app images, but one of the benefits of an app image is that you can just use an older version very, very easily to do so. So that's one option. Uh, Another thing you can do, like Tyler said, is just find a different thing to use. So they, you know, there's Olive, which I've never really cared for, but a lot of people seem to really, truly like, you know, there's you, there's a free version of Resolve if you can get it to, to work. You know, there, there's just a ton of different options, and that's fantastic. It's because I'm sure that if you were to use, be a Windows user, that there would be, like, options over there, too. And I'm long removed from my Windows days because I don't actually know. But, you know, I'm sure that there are other options. But it feels like if you're on Windows that you're either going to be using Premiere or one of the professional tools, and that's basically it. Now, obviously, Caden Live is on Windows. If you're on, if you are on Windows, you, a lot of the open source so- software is there as well. But, but pro, I mean, pro tip: use Linux. It's better. I I will say though, because of things like Windows Movie Maker, when most Windows users do not have a good perception of free video editors, because on Windows, you either assume one of two things, either 
it's like Windows Movie Maker and has like no features or the transitions it has, like it's been used a million times. It's not good. Or it's going to put a watermark over your edited video unless you pay for it. And then at that point, why not go out and pay for something that's like, you know, a standard that has a ton of tutorials around it to help you like, you know, learn stuff as you go has a lot more features. So it's really hard to get windows users to not just go ahead and spend the money on something that's considered industry standard and learn that, which I understand that the mentality behind that, it makes sense. Like on well, usually windows users are much more, interested or much more willing to pay money for things which is uh, linux people are less interested in that kind of thing but that's i think i think the context of in comparison to linux users is important there they're much more likely to spend money than we are well it's, it's like the con the comparison between ios and android users ios users are much more much more willing to spend money than Android users. It's just always been the case. It's the reason why Apple makes so much damn money off the app store is because everybody spends money on there and every app... All right, hold on a second. Just let me do a tangent here for a second. I have an iPhone and I am so fucking sick of every single application having a subscription service. Like, all I wanted was a fucking wallpaper, dude. I don't need a $20 a year subscription service to get me a wallpaper. I'll just go to Google Images. Okay, it dry, so every, and it's just like every application has a subscription service. Just and like, and it feels hypocritical because I have a Patreon page where people subscribe to give me money, but so I'm just another subscription service. But it just uh, it drives me absolutely bonkers. So, uh, anyways, that's com that's complete. I mean, <laughs> that that was the definition of a tangent. But I couldn't help it. Like I thought about it. Like God, I hate that. It just pisses me off. No, I completely agree. <laughs> it's just uh, a, it's, yeah. uh, so let, let's talk a little bit then about we kind of touched on it. Like we we've kind of we've talked a lot about the tools. Let's talk a little bit about the actual content itself. So obviously, this is going to be highly dependent on what you are going to be talking about. So like the the ideas here are infinite in number so we can't just like say you know if, if you're going to talk about linux you know here's the best way of doing things but if you're talking about fashion or makeup or whatever it's going to be completely different but specifically if you're looking at creating Lin linux content the th things that you talk about are going to be very well covered and you can't be afraid of the idea that you're going to be creating a lot of YouTube videos, probably if you're going to make YouTube videos about things that DT and Brody and Matt and all the others have already made videos on. Don't be afraid of it because it's going to happen. I guarantee. And there's going to be those YouTube commenters like, oh, didn't Chris Titus Tech just make a video about this? Yes, he did. I don't care. I made it too. Just in just well, the hold other. On, hold on. J just so we give a perfect example of this, wasn't it like, you published a video on flat packs and I published a video on it. Like either like one of us was like the day before or the day after the other one. And we had literally not talked about it at all and had no idea that the other one was doing it. It happens. So all the time. So, and it's just because there's, there's such a small pool of actual content ideas for us to have. So for example, I made a, I made a video on Florp. It's a, it's a Firefox fork. Three days later, Chris Titus Tech made a video on Florp. I didn't care because some people who watched his video came and watched my video and I got traffic from it. It was cool. It happened. So you, that, specifically in a very niche subject like Linux, like software, even whatever development, whatever you're going to get it into, don't be afraid of making duplicate content. You need to find other ways to differentiate yourself, which is important, but oftentimes you're going to be covering the same topics as a lot of your you know, quote unquote competitors. It's just going to happen. And also just ignore the people who say you're cop. I mean, unless you're actually blatantly copying somebody, which is bad, but if you just have the same idea, you know, and I think also an important thing to say here is actually share your real opinion on stuff. If people disagree with your opinion, that's fine. And that's normal. I think that's kind of what 
that's the only acceptable way of doing videos. Like you, you kind of do need to actually share your opinion unless you're literally running. Like if you want to do just a news channel, that's exactly what you're going to do. And it's very dry and just, uh, you know, a breakdown of a whole bunch of different articles, like kind of summarizing them. Sure. Maybe not, but otherwise I would say, give your real opinions and actually talk about that. It's also the best way to get comments because if someone doesn't like your opinion, trust me, they're leaving a comment. They're gonna and that's you know. good. Yeah, and that's good. Do what I do. I rant. That's what I do is I rant and come up with, okay, so chief example of what Tyler just said, Linux Mint is useless. There you go. You'll get death threats. That's how many comments you're going to get. <laughs> like Things like that. A lot of people talk about Linux Mint. In fact, I probably made a video about Linux Mint you know, during a, a release cycle where I criticized Linux Mint. So you, you're, uh, the best way to differentiate is exactly what Tyler says. Make it your opinion. Because chances are your opinion is going to be slightly different than Nick from the Linux experience, experiments opinions. Different than Mental Outlaw. You know, all the, we're all different separate little special snowflakes. And we're going to all have separate ideas and stuff. And, and that's important to learn also don't so some, oh, especially in the linux in the linux sphere people have a tendency to do this i did this i know a lot of people other people do that. they tend to develop uh, a style based on other people's content so specifically i'm talking about dt a lot of people steal or emulate dt's like thumbnails i saw, saw somebody who had a thumbnail that had his exact colors you know it looked like that now some people think some people do it because well they think they'll confuse people by thinking that they're dt other people just think well you know that looks cool i'm going to do it that way and that's fine but as you go along develop your own flair and your own style it's just it will happen over time as long as you're willing to deviate from the inspiration that you started off from well and also like i think my best my best advice to someone is like if you have no idea of your own type of like style for a thumbnail that you want to go with instead of just trying to replicate one person's style of thumbnail find, like the best way of not being considered just a copycat of someone else is and and you still want to derive inspiration from someone else to pick two to three people's thumbnails that you really like and figure out what you like best from each of them and then do that for your thumbnail style. Like that's, that's kind of the best, the best way of going about it. If someone's got really big, large, bold text in a certain type of like modern font, take that. Then, then like, you know, if someone has a border thing, like style that you really like, take that. And then like the overall layout of how the contents arranged, like take that from somebody else and then mix match them all together and try using that thumbnail, like do that kind of approach. It's unique that's a, and yeah, that's a really good idea. Or you could do what I saw. I saw somebody. So there's two different ways you could do it if you wanted to. First off, there are AI tools out there if you want to do the AI thing. It's not for me, but you could do it, and that would lit that that would literally automate what Tyler just said. Is that what they're doing is taking a whole bunch of stuff and putting it into one. It's just you can be lazy about it and do use AI instead. Another thing I've saw other people do is use things like Canva, which is like an online Photoshop kind of thing. They have dedicated templates that you could use. But let me talk about pet peeve for just a minute. And you and I have, I think we share this. Or maybe you don't share it because you put your ugly mug on the, on your thumbnails. Yep. <laughs> so we're a little bit different. Like, I'm never going to put my face on my thumbnails. I'm just never going to do it. I think I did it one time. It was stupid. I'll never do it again. I don't care for that particular type of thumbnail. And that's kind of the point we've been making all along here is that you got to kind of develop your own thing. And for me personally, I don't like the, the, the face on the thumbnails. Tyler's are actually very tasteful. He just has his face. On, usually it's him and Buddy or whatever. He looks fine. He's not making like a eh, stupid face on the thumbnail. You know, yeah. it just, those, it's not those, like a, oh like my God. Face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like Brody a lot. He's a good friend, but you know, he, he makes some really weird faces on his thumbnails works for him. 
would not work for me because nobody wants to see my fat ass on a thumbnail. It's just not going to happen. Okay, <laughs> just it's not the way. It is. I'd, so I'd the, click on a video with you, with you in the <laughs> thumbnail for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you you would have to know, given my idea, my thoughts on you know, that kind of thumbnail that this video has to be interesting. <laughs> so maybe when I really want a video to take off, I'll do it. I know I'm not gonna do it. it. Drives me nuts. Anyways, that, that really bu bugs me, but it works for a reason. Like for whatever, I mean, I've been lucky where I don't do that and it seems to work out okay for me, but a lot of people find that if they don't put a face on their thumbnail, they don't get any traction at all. I don't know why that really is. There's some kind of psychological thing behind people wanting to click on a thumbnail that has a face on it. But the reason why I thought about this is because if you use a tool like Canva, a lot of times they'll have like models on it. Like, here's the thing, okay? I've seen a lot of really, really small startup YouTubers do this where they, they take a image of a really hot woman, real gorgeous yep. woman, and put it on their thing. They're a dude obviously a dude very deep voice but they have a sexy woman on the, the thumbnail expecting yep. specifically dudes who you know i want to click on that type of content to click on that because there's a a beautiful woman on there that happens all the time don't 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 do that okay i mean some people don't do it on purpose but some of them blatantly do it drives me bonkers when i see this because it just feels like okay i clicked on this expecting a beautiful woman where the fuck's the beautiful woman <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, I feel I feel robbed if I'm going to click on it for that reason. You, you, that's not a way to build a sustainable audience because eventually people are going to realize, well, you know, that's a dude, not what's on the cover. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's uh, instead of clickbait, it's thumbbait. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's one of those things. It's just really see the thing thing about YouTube is is that it spawns this type of behavior because there is a lot of money in YouTube. Now, obviously, you you have to get to a certain point to make that type of money. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's be let's be honest. There's really not a ton of money in YouTube. I should actually say it better. There's a lot of interest in garnering attention on YouTube, not necessarily yes. money. Like the more likes you get, the more clicks you get and stuff makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. And if you the more skeevy you can get to get that attention, the better at least some people think. Not always in my opinion. Because you do weird things. Like you can do you do the Tide Pod challenge, and all that's doing is you're eating a Tide Pod, and people are looking at you like, yeah, that guy's a fucking moron, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think you make more videos after eat, uh, after eating a Tide Pod. So. <laughs> no, that's that, like those dumbasses who are who are who are recording themselves jumping out of a moving car. Like you can do that once. <laughs> you're never gonna do that again. That's not a sustainable content model because you're 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 either dead or you broke your legs. Maybe both. Well, or your, sh I mean, like your shoulders, like never going to be the same. Yeah. Like, but yeah, like, I don't know. I, to bring it back to like making content about just Linux in general, I, I, I don't think there's much to worry about in choosing specific things. Like if, if you have an interest inside of the Linux niche, make content about it. Like it, it does. Like I don't think pe I think people are too worried. Where it's like I'm only interested in Q tile. That's fine. Make a Q tile channel. I'd watch that. Like exactly. Like that's that's great. Like if you want to go really in depth with something and you know nothing about it, that's not a problem. Like start making videos about you learning it. Be like like go over what you're like what you've done like over the past couple of days. Like you know like. You can make content about pretty much anything. And I, I do think a lot of people talk themselves out of starting a hobby and content creation that they're actually very interested in because they don't think what they would like to do. People would be interested in. There are people out there that watch somebody like carve out wood for six hours. Like you can, you can, there are live there are literally live streams of someone working at McDonald's and they have viewers like you can do it funny thing 
My, one of my favorite things to see on TikTok is there's this one dude. He works in a Chinese restaurant. That guy is a boss at Chinese food. Like I don't, I can't, I don't like Chinese food. I'm watching this guy just hit there with his walk. I mean, he's just got like, <laughs> I mean, it's like freaking awesome. I just sit, I could sit there and watch him for hours, and it's it's amazing. So all I think that leads into your, you have to, it whatever your expectations are for your channel temper them a little bit but also be be realistic if you, if you are going to start making your qtal videos don't expect to be mr beast be happy with the the small amount of people that are going to come to your your channel because you're, you're never going to be a gigantic youtuber probably you know and that doesn't really that's not just the qtal person it's going to be any content you know uh, chances are you're not going to get to that point well, it's just very unlikely well, and it's like going and to the also, nfl it, it, it's the same thing with when you're starting from nothing, the handful of people, like when you're only getting like, you know, a handful of people stopping by the channel, like actually commenting and stuff, just know that will grow. As long as you keep doing it, it will grow no matter what it might take, you know, weeks, it might take months, but it will grow. Just also relish the fact that you're not super big. Because every single person that I've interacted with that has a much larger channel than mine, I might even say e even lar larger than yours, Matt, it is almost impossible to be personal with all the people that would like to talk with you. Because you, there's literally, even right now, I don't have enough time in the day to talk and address issues with stuff that I'm working on with, with everybody in my discord that would like to speak with me about issues because obviously I've got NixOS stuff going on. So I've got people who would like help and stuff and I just don't have time for everyone. I mean, I try my best, but I'm sure if I check my emails, I, I haven't even checked my emails. I'm sure there's somebody who's reached out there and I've just left them hanging for a day or two. Like, so it, it's nice when you have a smaller channel where the people who do like what you're doing and enjoy the output of your hobby, you can actually talk with appreciate that time because there will become a time where you feel like, you know, you can't do it. Like you can't, like you can't be that nice guy for everyone just because you don't have that much time in the day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely have experienced that as over time. It's just, you can't, ex I can't interact with all 42,000 people that subscribe to me. I just, I just can't do it. I don't, get, don't have that kind of time, but tools like discord do. So I was very opposed to starting a discord server at first, just because I didn't want to manage it. And I still don't want to manage it. That's why I pushed it off onto yours. Um, so, I mean, and I let my mods do a lot of the, the modding because I just don't have the t kind of time to do it. But I, I found that having a Discord server allows you to pick and choose and be personal, personal with a lot of people over the course of the day, without it feeling a burden. Because if you just miss, if you miss something on YouTube or on Discord, it's fine. You know, you it it's a chat application. Stuff's going to flow past faster than you're going to be able to see it anyways. Just know that you can interact when you can, and just. I mean, this is, I think is a good piece of advice inter because a lot of YouTubers sit on a throne above their, their community and never interact because they, they think that they just don't have time to do any of it. And I don't really care. It's one of the reasons why I really like DT because DT will, he'll come play zero AD with Tyler. You know, that's really cool. He'll, he'll come on the Christmas show for the Linux tube. You know, he, he spent, he spends a lot of time interacting. I mean, I mean, he, he has a huge audience, so obviously he doesn't have a ton of time to just talk to subscribers and stuff, but he does spend time in his comment section. He, but he also will interact with other Linux content creators, which is something that a lot, a lot of others will do. And I, I think that I like the type of content creator that even if they don't have time to reply to everybody, still spend some time amongst the, you know, the peasants of the, of, of their community. You know, like the, the regular Joe Schmo person in their community, they just go out and, and spend a little bit of time there. And I, I think that that does two things. One, it keeps people more interested and more connected to your content, but also it keeps you a little grounded because especially the more, con more subscribers, the more views you get, you can, 
have the tendency, at least some people will have the tendency to think that you are just pushing out content for the sake of either, you know, more subscribers, more views, or more YouTubers, or more money. And by spending some time in your community, no matter how big or small it is, it reminds you that you're actually doing this not only for yourself, but because you're trying to either help people or you're, you're creating content for whatever specific you're using. And it's for, a, you know, somebody to view. There are actually people on the other end of the equation. Yeah, I think I think an important thing about a Discord or like, you know, the reason why we're using Discord is you can't do a hobby and do it alone for like years without talking to other people that do the hobby and expect what you're what you're doing to improve like considerably like i mean you can improve by yourself but there's a lot of things that you can learn a lot by just talking to other people and it, discord allows you to be like the people who are in our discords are in our hobby they are they are interested in the same kinds of things we're interested in may not be the exact thing we're interested in at that at that moment but it, it's it's very good to have that and i mean as many as many times as we will complain about discord itself being unreliable having bugs that you have to like you know develop your own workarounds to solve like you know webcam stop working okay that means it, like in the call then rejoin the call and now your webcam and everybody else's webcam will be working just fine like it, annoying issues like that as annoying as it can be, it is probably the most full featured and well-rounded program that you can have for, you know, not just interacting with a community by sending messages, but talking with them and video calling, ha having all of those features, uh, especially once your discord server gets big enough and people are boosting it, you can send pretty large files back and forth between people if you need to. So it kind of helps out. I, I do like discord as much as much as I will complain about it. I do like it. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, if we had an open source alternative that was good, I mean, we'd use it, but we've talked about, <laughs> we've talked about <coughs> element <coughs> suck uh, before. Uh, so the, I, I guess the other thing that in terms of, like we just go back to talking about, creating the actual content is just that when you people tend a lot of times will get bogged down in the tools that they have so uh they'll wait to do something until they have the good microphone or they'll wait to have the good camera or whatever and also but here's the thing here here's the thing that you'll notice a lot of the big youtubers do which I, absolutely makes no fucking sense to me whatsoever they all go out and buy a fifty thousand dollar red camera like, you guys know that this is going to be put on YouTube where the compression is, like, literally, it compresses everything, right? It's all they do. And a lot of the a lot of the YouTubers were doing this before YouTube even did 4K. Like, I, I understand, like, if you're going to shoot something with a higher resolution so that you can edit it later on in a lower resolution, that makes a little bit of sense. But, and, but... You don't need to be shooting 16K footage, okay? You just, nobody can view that. It's... 5,000 gigabytes, nobody has that type of bandwidth, you know, it's just, you don't have to do that, and I think that one of the bad parts about there being so many successful YouTubers out there is that you see them spending a ton of money on their setup, and you think, oh, well, you know, if I'm going to do a YouTube channel about, you know, Qtile, I have to, you know, spend, uh, obviously, you're, you're probably not thinking I have to go spend a $50,000, but you think, oh, well, I have to have a, a reasonably good camera, but shh, you don't a lot of people just pro tip okay everyone has a phone of some kind use your phone that's all you gotta do like ser seriously use your phone if, if you want to if you're if you're using if you're doing like vlogs or whatever you know they have like little ten dollar you know selfie sticks or whatever get one of those and that's really all you need you don't need any anything fancy to get started and i think i think that See, for me, it was different because I had the expensive microphone to begin with. Because I've been podcasting since 2009. 
and I'm also a nerd and a techie, and I want that kind of stuff, and was able to, was very lucky to be able to buy that stuff when I wanted to have it, but when I wanted to create the YouTube channel, I had that stuff, and like I have the Heil PR40 behind me, it was my first big expensive microphone also it sucks <laughs> it's really really bad uh unless you have like unless you have like the editor who knows exactly how to make every piece of audio you've ever created sound good which i am not one of those people you can't get the how to sign sound good unless you, you you know exactly what you're doing whereas something like the sm7b will you know make anybody sound good but you don't need that kind of stuff to get started just use your phone and then if you decide to get a microphone Get the Samsung QU9 or Q whatever it is. And Q2U. QU, yeah, there it is. And <laughs> it's Q2U. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it was like, it's like 25, 30 bucks or whatever on Amazon. You can get it. It hooks via USB. Sounds perfectly fine. That's how Tyler started out. And then he got the pod mic, which is $100, which came from me. And you, you can slowly upgrade your stuff if you want to. But I know a lot of YouTubers that get really big. And never upgrade their 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 gear just because they don't care. It's just as long as it's good enough, and that's kind of the where I'm where I'm at right now. Like, I don't need a fancy DSLR. I'd like one, but I don't really need one, so I'm fine with what oh, I have. Yeah. Just, I mean, now that I've got one, I I can tell you, you definitely don't need one because then you got to upgrade your lights. Then you might have to get a nicer lens so that you can get you know like your full value out of this expensive case, like. You don't need all of the expensive stuff. And I mean, right now, like, I mean, now that I've gotten the expensive stuff, people are actually complaining because my room's dark because I don't have enough lighting. Like, I don't think you have to spend a lot of money to have like quality that won't, you know, that won't be upsetting to someone. You can make good quality with a run of the mill camera with a run of the mill microphone and do just fine. Like it's not a problem. Also, I would say don't spend a ton of don't spend a ton of time trying to fine tune things because once you start having people comment, like if you ha if you're having microphone issues and like everything's sounding fine on your end, people people will actually let you know in the comments, like hey, you're you like you're you sound quiet in the video. Yeah, everybody and, will let you. <laughs> Audio yeah. is by far, by far more important. Like everybody's saying in the in the comments yeah. right now, like uh, by far more important than video quality is by far. Also, another thing is, is that if you are going to do video, like actual video, put your face on your videos, like not, not, not like a thumbnails, but like in your videos. So like if you're going to do like Linux content, have your face down in the corner or whatever, at least for a little while as people kind of get to know you because it's more personable when they can see you. Now it doesn't. It's not a hundred percent. Yeah, always need. You don't. But, go ahead. Like no. Uh, so like you don't have to do that. I think that's an important statement to make. But it is nicer if you do it. Well, at least it to, makes it more personable. Uh, yeah, at least to begin with, because it does get people to know you, what you look like. Like it. It, it was. The, it was really hard for me because you know I'm not like the. I don't want to put. <laughs> I didn't want to put my face on anything. I don't. I would would much have preferred to nobody ever know what I look like. But it's just if you're going to make this type of content, you're much more likely to gain traction at first if you do have your face in your video somewhere along the line. It's not always the case. It's like not. It's not like a hundred percent true. There's a lot of TikTokers and there's a lot of YouTubers out there that have never shown their face. And there's a lot of. I, I, I have a lot of interesting comments to talk about VTubers. I'm not sure that that actually particularly works all that well, at least on YouTube. It seems to work better on Twitch. Uh, it doesn't really seem to work all that well on YouTube. But if, you, if you're going to do something like that, I mean, at least then you're putting some effort into it. And people can, I mean, it, that draws a certain type of audience, right? It's, it's going to turn some people away. Uh, you know, it's, it's not going to appeal to everybody. But it, it, it's at least some effort to do something that's more, you know, unique to you because you can decide what your character looks like and stuff like that. So I, I think that overall, if you're going to make content, not just like on the Linux topic, but as an on Linux, there are three things that you need to, to, to do first. Don't I'll put this learn OBS. Like we talked about before, absolutely learn OBS. That's their other tools, but, and you 
if you don't like OBS, you can always search for other tools. But if you, you learn OBS, you'll you'll be happy. Learn Audacity. And when I was talking about learn, I don't mean like, oh, I'm going to be an expert in audio editing. Just like learn where the buttons are, you know. Learn a couple of the keyboard shortcuts so you know where cuts if you need to do cuts. Learn, you don't need to learn what all the effects do. I, I to this day, use three effects. Compression, noise reduction, and normalize. Those are the three that I use. I've never used any others. Well, I, I think I used EQ back when I had the pod mic, but I fucked that up all the time. So I just learned not to do it because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Learn those three. That's all you need to do. And, and if you if you don't want to learn those three, that's fine. You, you'll probably sound a little bit better if you want to, but that's something that you can do after you've started making content. And the, and the third thing is, is that, and this is less to do with the actual tools, but consistency is the best thing you can do on anything when it comes to actually gaining an audience. Always, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be every day. Like, if you're going to make a video once a month, make a video once a month. That's great. Uh, just make sure it's, the same day, every single month, so people can kind of anticipate. Same thing with podcasting. If you're going to create a podcast, release the same time every single time. And it just, for whatever reason, that seems to be the thing that works the best. And it, that's kind of a well-known thing. So I like, uh, like I, I would just say when you're, when you're first starting out, if you really want, like if your goal is to reach as many people as fast as you can, no, when you're starting out, think of like your YouTube uploads as like YouTube being a boss that lets you set your own schedule and you're setting it with how you're uploading it at first. So if you're uploading every day, YouTube expects that to be your schedule and they're only going to continue showing people those videos if you're sticking to that schedule. Like if you're not, then it's kind of like your boss who's like, I'm going to cut down your hours. Like. I'll show it to some people, but not nearly as much as I was before, because how can I rely on you to upload videos? Well, you're very much Looking training the algorithm is what you're doing is, is you, you train it. And a lot of people don't think like that is like the, the algorithm, the al algorithm has t tendency to tendencies to scare some people away because it's like this mythical being that kind of lives around and either is like a it, it either pushes you into the limelight and you know, all of a sudden you're, you're Mr. Beast or you're dead and nobody's going to ever see you. And it can be that like you and I have both had videos where, wow, that thing done really, really well. Why did it do well? No clue. Wow. I thought that video was going to do way better than it was going to. Nobody watched it. That happens. Don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way that works. But there are certain things that you can do to train the algorithm somewhat specifically when it comes to consistency schedule release every day it's gonna expect you to do release every day now you can change it but it takes time and it also requires a bit of luck because sometimes it punishes you and you never recover like if you if for example you get covid it might be the end of your youtube channel because if you just take time off they don't you the algorithm does not like time off so uh, i think that would be my last piece of advice if you can get ahead get content have a schedule get ahead so that you have if you do get sick or get to you know point where you're too busy to make one for the next week or whatever you can push whatever you already recorded out and it's going to keep you from missing that schedule because consistency is absolutely the king of everything but yeah also oh one last thing filler words are horrible but everybody has them just know that every everyone i'm um ah, you know going through like like yep everyone has them and it dry <laughs> poor nate <laughs> i'm just telling you nate hates the filler words but it happens everybody has a filler word and i have gotten so much better at not having filler words but even then i still use um all the time it just happens like seriously seriously happens and it's just not, nothing you can do about it because you're always going to have some, but you can. And, and this is how I learned is that when you think you're going to have a filler word, just be silent. It's better to, it's much easier to edit out a silent than it is, um, uh, um, or whatever, you know? So don't be afraid of filler words, but try to do your best to, to filter them out as you can. And I'm, I mean, this is something that like, I, I do, I, 
I do tell people like if you're going to start editing and you're editing out your ums and ahs and whatever, some of them that make sense, like there some filler words you probably don't need to cut out. Like if you're uh, like if you go through if you're going through and, you know, it's like every 10 seconds, like, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you're saying it. Yeah. Cut cut a lot of them out, but there is probably going to be some of them that make sense where they are, like where you're thinking about something and, you know, uh, and then you, you say it really quickly afterwards. Like it, there are some ums and ahs that can be left in and it's not, it's not a problem. So you don't have to go through and make sure it's absolutely perfect. And there's not one single um or awe in the entire thing. Just cut out the excess amounts. Like, so I don't know. That's just kind of my advice. Don't don't think you have to be perfect in removing them, and they all have to be gone. Uh, no, because I mean you don't want you can I go just did too, it there. <laughs> you can go too far, right? And you sound completely unnatural. I mean, you might have said that just because you can. If you are going to edit, like if you're going to go into K and Live and actually edit out your filter words and the things that you messed up on, be aware of spacing. I I still have a tendency to do this a lot, where I put the you know, I do a cut and then I put the words too close together. It, you can make yourself sound like you never take a breath. And that is very unnatural. You got to breathe. And if you filter out all the places where you you took a breath, you're going to sound like you just have one run on, you know, your breaths are basically your periods, you know? Yeah. So you, you didn't get your mind out of gutter. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's basically it's it's your punctuation there you <laughs> yeah I, I get what you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i i don't know to me like when it comes when, when it also when it comes to doing like when it comes to editing things if if you're if you're afraid of editing and you don't really want to do that and you you don't want to have to work on it you can definitely sit down and for a while, like, I don't know how long it would take. Everyone's probably different, but it would probably take a month or two of training of sitting down when you got free time and recording a video and sit down, be awkward, talk to the camera and watch the video back and then try to redo the recording again with without using filler words and continue doing that and try to train yourself to sit down and be comfortable in front of a camera talking and with a deliberate mindset of whatever you're talking about in the background of your head you're always thinking about don't don't use filler words and i mean i i I think it would be hard to make an argument against that being a better way of approaching not having to edit out filler words and do all of that. Cause I do see a lot of people that go and stream because they completely don't want to edit videos or anything. And if you're one of those people, I will say if, if the whole point is you want to grow your channel and stuff, streaming is not a great way of growing your channel. It's a great way of engaging with the people that you already have on your channel. Maybe, catching a handful of stray people that don't watch your content and hang out and talk with you and engage with you. What, if you want to stream, my best advice would be take your stream and edit like clips from it, do that and upload it to your channel. That's the best advice I can give you. Just edit clips, upload them. Don't spend too much effort on the clips. Give it a good title. Give it a decent subscription link, you know, to any upcoming scheduled live streams you got, all that kind of stuff. Give it all your links, push it. Now that's, that's pretty much my best advice for streaming. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and move on then. I think we, I think we literally killed the topic. <laughs> we, 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 we talked ourselves we, in circles there for a bit, but it was fun. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the last episode, last part of the show, which is the Nuggies of the week. Still hate the name. Uh, we'll always wait. Have name. we done the links or like all that stuff? The content information, the contact. Yeah. We do that. Can we do that. Are you oh, new? Here? Oh, okay. You're new here, right? <laughs> I, I, I am. I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll do that after, but I will rem- probably won't rem- remember, so you'll probably have to remind me again. Anyway, so the we, Nuggies of the Week are where we talk about 
things that we're interested in and sometimes they're apps usually they're apps you also do tips or tricks or whatever so tyler your nuggy of the week if i'm being honest i can't even remember what i placed in neovide mine oh that's right oh yes because neovide is something i've been wanting to dive into and haven't had time for it still yet i'm trying to fix a whole bunch of like issues and stuff with my flake and system configuration for other people so i haven't had time to really go into it but man i've been watching videos and like looking at other people's config neovite is pretty freaking awesome like it looks really really nice and it because it works off of invit like so neovide is a gui front end to neovim and it, you have a lot of a lot of niceties that you can do with neovide like you know smooth scrolling you can have like cursor effects like there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with it so i think neovide is going to get me back because I, I was using NeoVim, went back to just regular old Vim, because why not? And now I might be going back to NeoVim again. So we'll see how that goes over the course of the next week. But yeah. All right. That's cool. Yeah, I, I tried NeoVide. I still prefer the terminal, but that's just because I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> just the way it is. All right, so mine is actually a phone app called Fable. And uh, basically, if you read a lot of books and you'd like to make that a social endeavor, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, Fable is basically a book club app. So if you want to join book clubs, and it's it's a good way to discover new books to read, you can head on over there. You can, there's a ton of different clubs that you can join, and you don't have to pay to join them. They're all free as far as I know. And you just join different clubs that are reading different things, and you can either stay in those clubs as they read different books, and that will help you discover different books, which is what I've done. So I've, a lot of them are like topic based. So I did one that's history, one with fantasy, fantasy, and that's really it's it's, just a, it, it's a nice way to you know find new books, but also as you're reading them, you can go in there and take part in chapter discussions and stuff like that. So it's kind of you know a social endeavor. So you can make reading it's a little bit more less just you know a lonesome thing and it, it works well i think it's on both android and ios so you can check that out and it just it works really well it's a nice app i wish it had a dark theme but that's really my only complaint about it and and the two that i've joined I've, like i said, joined one with history one with for fantasy and they pointed me towards a couple of really good books so far so uh, that's what that's my uh, nuggie of the week um, again it's called fable it's on uh, both platforms all right so that is it for the Linux cast this week, guys. I know that this was a very niche topic, and we're going to have a, quite a few niche topics going forward because we're taking these directly from the community. Now, we're not going to do community-based topics every time. Sometimes it'll be like, oh, I have a good idea for a topic, that's what we'll do, or Tyler will have a good idea for a topic, and that's what we'll do. Still the be-all, end-all choosers of what we talk about, but... If you want to suggest a topic that you'll think be more fascinating, head on over to the Discord. There's a podcast uh, ideas channel there. You can just leave one there, and we'll take a look at it. So you can get in contact with us in any number of ways. You can head over to the website, which, by the way, uh, I've been talking about this for ages, where I wanted to create a dedicated page for every single episode of the podcast, and I did it. All 137 episodes of the podcast have their own dedicated page, not, not only with a, an embedded audio player, but with a YouTube video there as well, if they had a YouTube video. And that goes all the way back to season one. It took forever. Also, if you, hey, here's the, the funny thing. If you subscribed to the RSS feed of the website, chances are you got a ton of spam because every single one of those pages came through all at the same time <laughs> there's 137 pings for anybody who, who subscribed to the the rss feed so I, if that happened to you i apologize uh, i did fix it i believe to the point where now it, the if it comes through you won't have to worry about the podcast coming through as well but it, i apologize for the spam it, it it just happened but it was a one-time thing but anyways you can head over to the the the, the 
website. It's the linuxcast.org. There you'll find all of our previous episodes all the way back to season one. You can also find all of the blog posts that I post there. Uh, Tyler is on YouTube at youtube.com slash zanyog. He does make YouTube videos from time to time. You can subscribe to them there. T- subscribe to him there. He also has a, a Discord server as well that you can check out. You can follow me on YouTube at youtube.com slash linuxcast or on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast if you want to support me. Also head on over to the store shop.linuxcast.org you can also take advantage of the thing that I talked about earlier with, for the 10% off if you want to help support the channel. I think that that's all I have to say. Oh, email. Email at the linuxcast.org if you want to email us the old traditional fashion, old fashioned way, uh, which is probably, uh, I do actually get those emails. So uh, I read them. I don't always respond, but they're there. Anyways, that is it for this episode. We, we do record this every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, you can join us live then, because it's awesome to join us live. The The chat there has been complaining that the podcast is no longer good, because there's only two of us now. Thanks, guys. Um, just let you know. Uh, we really appreciate that pick-me-up, because, you know, it, it's just a horrible podcast now. There's only two of us. We, we got rid of the good guys, apparently. Um, sorry about that. Uh, anyways, we miss you, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve, how are you guys doing? Uh, that's it for, that's it for us this one uh, we'll be back next week we'll be talking about something that's even more dry than this one but it's going to be an interesting topic because we're talking about security on Linux so uh, we'll see you next time